Good day everyone, this is Meryl's Aurelius Abantu and for today's video, I am going to discuss about the killers of balance reporting, functions and duties of the press, and limitations of the press. From the title itself, we can assess that what we are about to discuss are the approaches in journalism that kills a balanced report. When we say balance, it means it has no biases and only meant to tell nothing but the truth. So let's start! We are now on the main part of my discussion. But first, let us clarify some terms what really is different between biased and balanced reporting. If a newspaper or magazine article is biased, it means that it takes sides and does not give fair representations of both sides of an argument. Which means, biased reporting typically covers only selections of results in the analysis of data. We will find out more what that means as we progress in our discussion. On the other hand, if a newspaper or magazine article is balanced, it means that it does not take sides and it considers both of points of view in an argument. Also, balance can also mean righteousness, objectivity, and professionalism when it comes to journalism. Now, let us move on to the killers of balance reporting. Yellow journalism. This is simply sensationalizing a story or an issue. This is a type of journalism that presents little or no legitimate, will research news and instead uses eye-catching headlines to sell more newspapers. The main purpose of yellow journalism is to attract the eyes of the readers by putting on flashy headlines, clickbait as we call it today and soon. The technique may include exaggerations of news events, scandal, monitoring, or what we call sensationalizing which can be mostly seen in showbiz stories. Here are some examples of yellow journalism. Next is the new journalism. So, the new journalists expanded the definitions of journalism and legitimate journalistic reporting and writing techniques. They also associated journalism with fictions when they described their work with praises such as non-fiction novels and narrative techniques of fictions, which was then described as a movement journalism that does not use tradition style. It is a very broad term with many writers utilize a, ver a variety of different non-traditional techniques. New journalism became popular primarily during the 1960s and 1970s, which was then described as a movement journalism that does not use traditional style. It is a very broad term with many writers utilize a variety of different non-tradition techniques. This is what we should remember about new journalism that uses non-traditional techniques is writing articles. It became more novel-like and associated with narrative techniques of fictions, which ignited debate over how much like a novel of short story. Journalistic peace should be before it become violating journalism commitment to state truths and facts. Here are the example of new journalism. Joe Louis the King as the Middle Aged Man by Gay Talisi. Gay Talisi, by the way, is one of the first journalists to ever use new journalism. Tom Wolfe, whose name would later become irrevocably tied to new journalism said of the article it wasn't like a magazine article at all it was like a story it began with a scene with an intimate confrontations between Louis and his third wife next is the advocacy journalism this is a genre of journalism that unlike propaganda it's fact-based but supports a specific points of view on an issue. 
Advocacy journalists are expected to focus on stories dealing with com corporate business practices, government policies, political corruptions, and social issues. Most advocacy journalists reject the supposed objectively at the mainstream press as a practice impossibility and some others take the positions that the economic censorship exerted by corporate sponsors is not different from political censorship from the word advocacy itself we can derive that this approach meant to promote a side or proposition rather than giving objective news reporting this can be often seen or on corporate business practices, government policies, political corruption, and social issues. So, the example of advocacy journalism, I can't find the exact example for this, but just to get the point that this is focuses on political and corporate business issues, also in social issues. Next is stylistic journalism. So, it emphasizes imaginative stylized writing of stories and considers newspaper as literatures of immediate fact. It's quite the same with new journalism which subdues the traditional objective news writing of journalism and instead considers newspapers as literatures of immediate fact. Also, from the word stylistic, which is a branch of applied linguistics, which examine the creativity and the use of language. So by that, we can assert that stylistic journalism uses creative language in dealing with report. Some may wonder what makes that a killer of balanced reporting while well, news reporting. An article writing should be objective and the use of creative or stylistic language may ruin the purpose of objectivity. For example, we have here in Cold Blood by Truman Capote. It is a true crime genre novel. This includes some important stylistic points such as the dual perspective used in novel as well as raised questions on important issues such as the honesty of journalism and the rule of mental health in criminal proceedings. And lastly, editorializing, this is giving the reporter's opinion rather than the fact. This is giving the reporter's opinion rather than the fact. It may also mean expanding of news about insignificant happening to give publicity to the subject. To write a news report or an article, the journalist should represent factual information and not offer his or her opinion when it's not appropriate. You wanted your news to be legitimate, fact-based, and not promptly making your own say or opinion in the topic because you are already compromising the flow of truthfulness to the general public. Here are some examples of editorializing. Everywhere on campus, things are changing. Switching to the Arrowhead conference should be beneficial for the IVCC team. The new phone system will save money and be more convenient to students and staff. While these are simple statements, we can assert that the writer have generalized an idea and not actually taking both sides. The topic you editorialize the news by adding your subjectivity rather than being objective. And now, let's proceed to the second topic, which is functions and duties of the press. Along with the glory of violin is the great responsibility of a young writer. So the following are the functions and duties of the press. The quality of the newspaper must be reflected in the editorial policy. It is more than just a business because it also reflects and influences the life of the whole academic community. Newspaper must have integrity and readers confidence. Newspapers may educate, stimulate, assist, or entertain. It is therefore a moral responsibility to balance public interest and the gains. The fundamental of the newspaper rests 
on the quality of the content and the kind of editorial product. It is responsible for the rights of the reader's educational level and a resurgence of an articulate, active young generation. Freedom of the press encompasses responsibility of the newspaper. Freedom of the press encompasses responsibility of the newspaper. Freedom of the press and responsibility are inseparable. Responsibility of the press means truth in the news, truth tempered with mercy, decency, and humility. The press must practice the principles of journalism without bias and self-interest. And now let's proceed to the limitations of the press. What are the limitations of the press? David Broder assigned by Pangalinan in 2012 a word reports are flawed hence reports are not that complete and may bear mistakes. The limitations of the press may be traced upon the time frame within which an article should be submitted to publication. Remember that journalism secures the freshness of the information. Therefore, when a journalist is in a hurry to beat the deadline, he may not have enough time to reach all the resources of the information. This implies that readers of the information consuming public should judge very critically the articles, the reports, including the photos. Readers should know how to ask questions that are left unanswered in the same manner when journalists dig for facts on, the, on an additional information. Another limitation of the press is its proneness to be manipulated by the powerful, the elite, and the politicians. Broder in 1987, as cited by Pangalinan in 2012, pointed that every good politician will attempt to work well with the press. If you live in a country where public opinion ultimately decides public policy, any politician who is at all serious in going to try to manage public opinion. And that means working with the press so they will do it. And that's all. Thank you.